So today we're with this Ford Focus RS, a very good looking car. And we've been challenged by another friend of ours called Petrol Ped, who's here today, in a very similar sort of car to see how this stacks up against his. And we're also gonna meet up with a couple of other friends. So join me and let's see how it goes. The sun's out, we're by the seaside, should be a lot of fun. Finally behind the wheel on some nice roads in the Focus RS. That is quite impressive. It's got a nice little pop. Very familiar pop that you have with the likes of the uh, A45 Mercedes AMG. And I guess it's right in that bracket. A45, you've also got the Golf R, you've got the Audi, little Audi uh, S3 as well. Um, but we're with three, we're joined with three very different cars to, to those. The sort of lower end, if you like, not, not the quality that you would expect or be familiar with with that Mercedes and Audi, but uh, it feels like it's well built. Yes, there's lots of plastic um, in the car all around, but I think that's what it's supposed to be. I, I almost feel like I'm in a bit of a too fast, too furious car. You've got the gauges up here, the, uh, the bar, the turbo, the pressure. You've got a big speedometer right in front of you, which is good. It makes it very easy to see, um, <laughs> see what speed you're doing, if you're being good or bad. So much so, I hope this doesn't destroy the audio, but I'm gonna put the window down because the little pops and crackles of this car, I think are what makes the car. The thing that I don't like about this car, and there's a few things I don't like about the car, but the thing I don't like about this car is something that Ford can't help, is the fact that it's got winter tires on. And you don't really notice it on the grip around the corners because we're not pushing it ridiculously hard, but when you do notice it, it's when you brake hard, or even when you accelerate as well, but you just notice, you just, you're just missing a little bit with regards to the, the grip. So now we're in a proper car. They're all proper cars, but this car, this is an iconic car. It's the Mitsubishi Evo Mark 10 FQ400. It's a one of 35 car in the world. I'm told it was owned by someone very senior within uh, Mitsubishi, whoo, cattle grid, within Mitsubishi. And straight away, wow, it feels so analog. It feels, it brings back some incredibly fond memories of driving cars like this all through my youth. Because cars of today, they've just kind of made us soft a little bit where they do so much for you. This is incredibly analog. You feel very, very connected. Although, having said that, the steering's much, much lighter than I would have thought. And it feels like it's got so much more power than that Focus RS I've been driving. Now, I'm told the brakes are phenomenal on this car, but it's, it's a car that I think you'd need to do quite a few miles in and you'd need to own yourself to push a little bit harder to find out where the limits are because I don't feel incredibly confident about braking hard and I've got the three cars in front of me. Whereas the Ford Focus RS uh, or the Subaru or indeed the, the Honda Civic, you know you brake and all the computers and the machines are just gonna sort you out. Whereas this just feels so much more analog than the other cars. And this beautiful carbon fiber gear knob which just sits in your hand so fantastically. It's also got a carbon fiber handbrake but I'm instructed not to do any handbrake turns so we'll give that a miss. The Evo is kind of a bit synonymous with being a bit plastic fantastic and sure, but it still feels like it's refined. It still feels, look at the wonderful seats and the, the door trim as well. It's, you know it's just not hurriedly thrown together. You know they've taken some time. I've got to say, if I was asked if I would want to drive this car on the motorway all the way down to the south of France from the UK, I'd probably make up an excuse, something like I have to wash my hair or something equally as boring, but 
If they said you have to avoid every single motorway and go on every single small and windy road throughout the whole of France, I think I'll bite their hand off. This is really fun to drive. A very, very impressive car. So straight out of the Evo into the Scooby, and I'm in the STI, and it just feels completely, completely different. This is a, a new car, a brand new car. It just feels, feels so much heavier. And we're only driving around town at the moment, but you can tell the gearbox just feels much better, much more modern, it feels very light and tight. Uh, but the steering feels really, really heavy. You haven't got that same sort of feel that you have in the Evo as you've got in this car. But it's fascinating, the two cars, been competitors for so long and they're so different I had no idea how different they were to drive even though we're we're talking about a maybe a five-year gap in terms of the two cars I drove I remember when these cars came out and there was so much competition between the Evo or the Scooby what did you like which you could only have one you could only choose one it was like a football team you're either City or United you couldn't be both I don't know about this Subaru I have to say there's nothing that gives me any sort of wow about it Everything is very solid, everything is very capable as you would imagine, but there's nothing that really gives you that, oh wow, I want to jump in the car, I want to jump in the STI and take it for a, for a monster drive down some B roads. It just, everything just seems too flat for me. I want some sort of excitement with the car that I drive and, and I, that's the only thing I can think with this car that, why I'd probably choose one of the other cars over this. End of another amazing day. And that was a really incredible day. The roads were fantastic. The cars were great. I didn't even drive this. I drove about two miles. So I will reserve comment and judgment until a later date. But it certainly looks the part. This is what I spent most of the time in. And this is what I'm testing for a couple of weeks now. And I love it. It's good fun. It's a car that you would definitely jump in and just drive and take for a spin on some country roads. A lot of fun. The Subaru. Well, you know what? Nothing was exciting about the car. It was very competent. It did what it said it was going to do on the tin. You have to remember that it's the least powerful out of the three cars. It's got 300 horsepower as opposed to 350 and 400, give or take. But there's nothing, there wasn't even a nice noise about it. So for sure, it's not the car that you're going to say, come on, let's go for a drive and, uh, and have some fun on the, on the country roads. But I'm sure you can do an oil and filter change without even opening the bonnet. Look at the size of that air intake. And it won the award for the biggest rear wing. And that's saying something with this thing because this thing has a big rear wing, but this thing, without doubt, is the most impressive out of the three cars that I drove today. Just because it just felt like there was a real sense of occasion and purpose about the car. Absolutely fell in love with this today. Big respect for the Evo. The oldest car here, the most powerful car here, and for sure, my most favorite to drive if we were gonna go on another day like today. But of course, it's not about driving on days like this. It's about general driving, everyday driving, it's got to be the RS, special occasions for sure the Evo, and I'm sorry Mr. Subaru, that one would be reserved for somebody else. But thanks for tuning in, hope you enjoyed it. It was a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to uh, hang out with Petrol Ped today. Check out his video, he's done a very similar video, but a bit more hands-on and a bit more detail about the cars as well. So see what he thinks, or whether he thinks one of the other cars should, uh, should be the top of the tree. So Petrol Ped, we'll put the link somewhere or other, down below, up above, but uh, check him out as well. It was a pleasure to hang out with him. Thanks for tuning in. See you again soon.